All right, now I want to get into shadowing and how it works uh, real quickly. I have a spotlight here, and I have two different types of shadows. I have a ray trace shadow, and I have above it depth map shadow. Okay, so let's go into depth map shadow. I'm just going to set this to default, which is 0, 1, 5, 12. With this on, what will happen is I'll get a very direct shadow. See, but I'm also having this blockade effect on the outside edge. So to improve that, I have to up the resolution. Now this one's this depth map shadows is based upon pixels. The other one is based upon linear. Uh, one's kind of ran by pixels. One's kind of ran by math. If you kind of think of it that way. So in a world of pixels, we can manipulate pixels in several ways. Pixels can be easily blurred, where the other one cannot. Here, at 2048, that's enough resolution to actually pull up a hard edge. If I say I want a soft edge for that, I up the filter size. So maybe a two filter size. will produce a nice soft edge on the shadow. Now be very careful with that filter size. It's very powerful. And you'll see filter size appear on many nodes. Filter size is always the amount of blur that occurs. Okay. So there's certain features that you just don't want blurred. Bias, that's the offsetting of shadows. So I don't really touch bias too much. It's uh, generally, you know, if you, if you want to offset it to make it look like it's not on the ground you can do that like the light is coming from such an angle that is somehow magically lifting the ball up but again you know if i wanted really that look i'd lift the ball up in the air and that way the shadow would be more exact to it i don't really recommend you know tweaking bias too much uh shadow intensity or fog intensity that's a whole different story altogether i'll get into that later now let's get into ray tracing shadows. So ray tracing shadows are a more exacting linear path of light. And you'll see that it has a nice edge by default. And it has a nice edge no matter what. There's no resolution. The only thing, the difference between the two is ray tracing shadows take a little bit longer because you have to go in and make sure that you have ray tracing on. And this is kind of how accurately it's going to actually produce. So ray tracing. Okay, without that on, it won't appear at all. To blur the outside edge. Okay, let's let's think about that for a second. Um, my light radius, if I put that up to like one. You're going to start getting that blurring of edge. And to counter that, I would probably put this up at 1, 2, but, or 2. And what that will do is it will help with the blurring on the outside edge, the number of rays. So these go kind of tit for tat. If you want to blur something, you up the light radius. If uh, you want to make the the actual blurring a little bit nicer you use the shadow rays all right so for now that's that's what I want you to know um, we'll get into it a little bit more but that's just the 101s of shadows because there's certain ones that actually produce or work with alphas there's fog but fog sometimes don't doesn't work with alphas too well unless you use it a uh, certain kind of shadowing so there's so many little rules that to set up all the scenarios would be hard for right now so we'll move on to what the real topic is is uh like caustics reflections refractions and all those other things all right so let's go on to the next video